For the first time, physicists have detected strong evidence of the long hypothesized gravitational wave background, a continuous hum of nanohertz gravitational waves spreading out through space time from various sources all around us. This finding is extremely exciting to radio astronomers and astrophysicists, and it opens up an entirely new way to observe the universe. The source for these signals are likely two orbiting supermassive black holes that go around each other eventually colliding. And this would have occurred in the past. What makes this finding even more impressive is that these signals are not detectable from devices on Earth, such as land-based interferometers, for example, LIGO. These background gravitational waves are of frequencies so low that they're in the orders of nanohertz with extremely high wavelengths stretching up to lakhs and crores of kilometers and a period of oscillation that spans years and decades. This requires an interferometer that is larger than the size of the Earth. So the scientists turn the entire Milky Way galaxy into an interferometer to discover evidence of these waves. These findings are one of the most precise measurements ever made in astrophysics. The precision levels that can be achieved in these calculations are along the lines of about 10 centimeters in the position of a black hole. This bit of work took 15 years and hundreds of scientists using some of the most advanced radio telescopes in the world and some of the sharpest cosmic clocks in the universe. Stars and exploding stars like supernovae can be observed through the electromagnetic spectrum. On the other hand, extremely massive bodies like black holes and neutron stars emit so much energy that they disrupt the very fabric of space-time. So their effects can be observed as gravitational waves that travel at the speed of light. These waves bend and flex space-time, altering both space and time by a fraction of a second at a certain point. Ground-based interferometers like LEGO detect these waves by observing periodic signals in the interferometer with high precision and catching a minute variation in the time they take to reach their target. And this would have been caused by the flexing of space-time by a passing gravitational wave. Multiple interferometers help improve the accuracy of any signal and also help triangulate the source. Black holes are the most massive, meaning the heaviest or having the most mass. They are the most massive objects in the universe. Their mass is measured in terms of the mass of the sun for ease, and they range anywhere from three solar masses, which is the size of the smallest black hole that we know, to 10 raised to 11 solar masses or 10,000 crore times the mass of our sun. These larger extremes of black holes are called supermassive black holes or SMBH and they are present at the center of all galaxies. Our own Milky Way orbits a supermassive black hole called Sagittarius A star. To understand how these massive bodies affect the fabric of space-time, an easy explanation that scientists typically use is that of a rubber sheet. Imagine the space-time around us is the rubber sheet and all these massive objects are various proportionally heavy balls. More massive objects on this rubber sheet cause a larger depression in the fabric, pulling objects farther away towards themselves, which represents gravity. So now, when the most extreme of these supermassive black holes orbit each other and eventually collide, they continually emit gravitational waves at extremely low frequencies which are measured in nanohertz. Unlike gravitational waves emitted by smaller black holes that are detected by LIGO at much higher frequencies and eventually end when the source objects collide, these nanohertz waves are continuous with no end in sight. These waves are not going to end in human timescales. But if they take decades and their amplitude is lakhs of kilometers long, how were they detected? They were detected through pulsar timing arrays. Pulsars, which are short for pulsating radio sources, are rapidly spinning neutron stars that emit pulses of energy with extremely high precision. 
They spin at the rate of hundreds or thousands of times per second with pulses having time periods in milliseconds. Yet they are so precise and are so consistent that they are used as reference for other measurements that involve time periods. And they were used in this experiment as well. Bursts of energy or pulses from these pulsars arrive at a precise time at Earth. But when a gravitational wave passes through the pulsar, it stretches and compresses space-time, leading to an extremely minute change in the time taken for the pulse to arrive. This change is so small that it makes a difference only at 4 or 5 digits after the decimal point. The teams waited for nearly 15 years to confirm a change in pulse time periods and a change that is just about 1 microsecond in 15 years. But at the end of 15 years, there is reasonable evidence that a nanohertz gravitational wave passed through these 75 pulsars that were used. These pulsars were spread out all across our skies in the Milky Way galaxies. This turned the entire Milky Way into a giant interferometer. The telescopes that study them are called pulsar timing arrays and this data comes from arrays in Australia called PPTA for Parkes Observatory, Europe called EPTA which uses five powerful telescopes, the North American coalition called Nanograph which has data from two telescopes, the Indo-Japanese collaboration in PTA that uses the upgraded GMRT and China's CPTA. This Pune-based GMRT telescope, one of the most widely known radio telescopes in the world, played a major role in these findings. As these pulses from outside our galaxy travel through the interstellar medium, which is the medium between two stars, and enter towards Earth, there is noise introduced in the signal because the interstellar medium is made up of plasma. Here is where the very crucial contribution by the NPTA comes in. The giant meter wave radio telescope GMRT, which is now upgraded, is very unique in that it is the only telescope in the world that observes a single target at two different ranges of low frequencies simultaneously. Thus, the telescope is able to identify the noise added by the interstellar medium and separate it from the pulsar's data and this is most efficiently done in the lower frequencies that GMRT operates in. So GMRT ends up enhancing the signal of all of these pulses, which is exactly what happened when the Indo-Japanese and the European datasets were combined. In total, the datasets that were released contain individual datasets from different coalitions, from PPTA, from the nanograph teams, and the combined datasets from EPTA and NPTA. The publication and the uploading of these papers were timed with each other, but going forward, the IPTA team, which is the International Pulsar Timing Array team, made up of all of these coalitions, want to combine all of their results so that they can get a more accurate reading and something that would help trace the sources of these nanohertz gravitational waves. In fact, this work has already begun. And when that data is released, the dataset will offer information into all 75 pulsars that were used in this study over the last 15 years and their data and also help triangulate the sources in the sky. Everyone involved is confident that the search will lead to a black hole black hole pair with results expected to be announced in one of the next two dataset releases within the next two years. The gold standard in physics for detecting a new phenomena and confirming the finding is at 5 sigma. This finding is not there yet with the gravitational wave background detection but will be within the next two years hopefully. Now this entire collaboration involved hundreds of educational institutions. In India, a number of research institutions participated. The National Center for Radio Astrophysics, which is NCRA TIFR, is the one that operates the telescope, and this team led the project. There were also scientists from TIFR Mumbai, IMS Chennai, IIT Hyderabad, ICER Bhopal, and Raman Research Institute participating with active work. Students from ISER Mohali, ISC Bangalore, ISC Kolkata and ISC Tiruvananthapuram have contributed to the work as well. All of these computations that were performed with the GMRT data required intense computing power which was provided by supercomputers at IIT Roorkee and IIT Hyderabad named Param Ganga and Param Seva. All of these institutes will continue work on the project. 
Detecting the source would make it easy to calculate the mass of these likely supermassive black holes through Einstein's equation, which would in turn make their evolution understandable and whether they can solve a big mystery around us. There are large galaxies all around us today, especially spiral galaxies, and we don't really know how they formed and how they came to be. The current theory is that smaller galaxies with smaller black holes emerged in the early universe and they merged together and two or more merged together to form larger spiral galaxies such as our Milky Way. We can understand how today's galaxies evolved by understanding these early supermassive black holes that at one point emitted these background nanohertz waves.